Good afternoon, everyone. This is a show that comes with a disclaimer. You may be offended, but as my pastor, Danny Barton, says, you'll get over it. The last 10 days have given us a chance to witness the peaceful transfer of power in this country, the right to peaceful protest in huge numbers. And we've seen civil unrest that accomplishes what? Vandalism, bodily injury, acting out? But that's just my opinion. We've got guests today who cheered with thousands of others as our new first family paraded down Pennsylvania Avenue and others who marched in solidarity, protesting injustice and discrimination. Millions of people around the world marched in protest last Saturday, January 21st. The movement stemmed from the National Women's March on Washington. About a quarter million people turned out in D.C. Their message is women's rights are human rights. Take a look. Away. Responding to a historic day by Donald John Trump by making history themselves. As many as 750,000 people in Los Angeles, 400,000 in New York, from Seattle to Boston, London to Kenya, and more than 600 other towns and cities around the world, including here in the nation's capital. They marched. And I am here to pray with my feet. Mm -hmm. Women and I men. Daughter. I have to do this for my daughters and my country. Parents and from children. City, we felt it was really important to be here. Strangers and celebrities. Good will win in the end. Saying they are fighting for equal rights and against President Donald Trump's rhetoric and policies, hoping the strength of their numbers and passion in their words. We have rights that we need to fight for. Will send a message on his first day in office. We want to tell Trump that we're not going to stand for all of the hate he spews. Just a few miles away, President Trump started his day with an interfaith prayer service, followed by a meeting at CIA headquarters, making no mention of the masses who spent the day marching for unity in a divided nation. And here at home, women in the Augusta area joined in on the movement. Hundreds protested in the downtown area despite the rainy conditions. Two local women came together to plan the march and created the organization Augusta Solidarity to bring civil and human rights activists together. The march was promoted as nonpartisan, but many protesters said the election of Donald Trump was the catalyst that called them to action. Became depressed in a way that I had not been depressed since my husband died a year and a half before. Um, and I could not see anything good when I considered the statements he had made during the campaign. I'm marching for women's rights. I want to make sure that uh, they're not swept away with the new administration. Uh, I'm fighting for all rights, quite frankly. The official Women's March has several unity principles, including ensuring reproductive rights, LGBTQ rights, civil rights, and environmental justice. And several women with Augusta Solidarity have joined me here on the couch today. Welcome Jennifer Rahner, Lisa Gray, and Keely Burwinkle. And did it start as a Facebook page? How did you start it? Um, I couldn't go to D.C., and so we decided that we were going to do one here. So, right. you know, she was like, well, I'm just going to put it out there. And you just put it out there, happens. Keely, on Facebook? Is that how you did it? Um, well, first we created a closed group just to kind of gauge interest. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, a lot of times you can have a vision you share with people, but it's not enough to bring people together. And so I kind of wanted to get a feel for how many in the area were actually willing to, you know, come out and stand in solidarity with everybody that has nothing in common with them. Right. Right. And so once we started garnering interest on the closed organization page, we started to have um, some meetings of individuals in, in person. Um, and there was some reorganization since then, and probably about two weeks before the march, we really had some volunteers, Jennifer is one of them, who came in and just really knocked it out of the ballpark. There is no way the march could have been pulled. Our conversation with Augusta Solidarity continues after the break. Signature service, Bay One. At Jiffy Lube, we want you to have it all. Expertise and convenience. That's why with our range of services and our award-winning training program, you can be sure to find our expert technicians around almost every corner. All good? 
France. Join the 20 million people who get their vehicles serviced at Jiffy Loop. See you next time. Thank you. Jiffy Loop Multicure, now open on Washington Road. Leave worry behind. Jiffy Loop. Make tomorrow awesome with Xfinity TV from Comcast. Right now, you can get Xfinity TV for just $19.99 a month for 12 months with Xfinity On Demand included. Call 1-800-800-2380 today. Xfinity On Demand delivers thousands of hit shows, top movies, and more at no additional cost. So you can stream the latest episodes of TV's hottest shows anytime, anywhere, on even more screens. Get started with Xfinity TV for just $19.99 a month for 12 months with Xfinity On Demand included. Plus, ask how you can add HBO, Showtime, or Stars and enjoy award-winning TV shows and movies at home and on the go. It's all backed by our 30-day money-back guarantee. So it's risk-free. Enjoy top shows and movies at a great low price. Call 1-800-800-2380. That's 1-800-800-2380. Xfinity, the future of awesome. He's seen the world on the brink. Folks like him worked for decades at the Savannah River Plant and quietly helped win the Cold War, but it cost him his health. America is now honoring this sacrifice by providing free home health care from professional case management. It's the best possible care in the best possible place, home. If you have this card, you are eligible for free home health care. Call 855-CARE-TODAY. You've earned it. Rob a bank? Nope, I filed my taxes with Rhodes Murphy. Hey, did you read the lotto? Nope, I filed my taxes with Rhodes Murphy. Need an advance on your refund? Contact us today at RhodesMurphy.com. How did they get the word out? We actually created an event page when people were right. starting to show. Mm -hmm. You know, and honestly, I thought maybe 50, 100 people might show up. Um, so. so you were very pleased with that turnout. Yeah, like uh, 600 plus. That was fantastic. In the, the, storm. the video, right? They're standing there with umbrellas yeah. and their their signs and the children. Mm -hmm. You know, it's great to see the ones who bring their children because I think that it's important to be an activist and to take a stand. And I think that maybe in some of the women's march, of course, it happened around the world. Mm -hmm. And we were speaking earlier about how exciting that was to see how it kicked off in time zones before us mm -hmm. and that mantle just got passed along but maybe some of the message got a little bit clouded or misinterpreted how did you look at it Jennifer as you were as you were participating in this what was the message for you uh, there are many groups locally and people individually working for on different issues I personally work in the LGBT community here um, but there are people working from all sides of the coin, whether it's racial inequality, uh, disabled rights, the environment, and I, enjoy, I really appreciated the um, mission statement that they had for Augusta Solidarity because it talked about bringing everyone together under this one umbrella so that we can rely on each other and help each other work on our different issues because really our issues are all interconnected. Uh -huh. They're all about equality and justice. Now, did you all know each other, Lisa, before the march um, last Saturday? I've known Keely since we grew up together as children, okay. but Jen and... It's been two weeks today. We've known oh. each other for two <laughs> weeks, yeah. So, you know, that was... I think that was a really beautiful part of how this all came together is we got a lot of people who really wanted to help and right. a lot of people who didn't know how they could help and then we had people who just jumped right in with all of their assets that they had to offer and you know it was I mean Jen was all in you know uh -huh. and it, it's it, it kind of brings up a lot of emotion when you have something that you are working so hard to do in such a short period of time and you're under so much pressure to, you know, deliver. to deliver right. up on these expectations that your community has, all of the different umbrella, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. drops that are underneath there, right? And so she really helped us with that, and uh, she helped us with our, our outreach and, you know, getting in touch with people and, and things of that nature because, you know, we all 
are regular people and we all have jobs too. Yeah. So it's not like right. we just are, oh, I think I might want to take on a hobby. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Right. right. But don't you think as women that we're just equipped to do that? I mean, we just are because... To, to multitask? Yes. And because it's because we have a uterus and we can multitask. I've always said that. But also, it's, it's like the, the adage, if you want to get something done, give it to a busy woman. And, but we're, and we've always been expected crazy. to, too. We, I mean, we if, you, if you look at the progression of women's rights over time, you know, That's it true. was great when women came into the workforce in the 70s and in the 80s. But in, in a lot of ways, they haven't, we haven't been able to give up any of the other responsibilities no. yet. Many right. women haven't. We just they, keep piling it on. Exactly. We, on. We, we're still primary mm -hmm. caregiver for children. Absolutely. And, and I'm not talking all marriages, and I'm not talking, you know, in all situations. Well, we can talk but. about mine, because I constantly <laughs> tell my husband that he is the fourth kid. <laughs> <laughs> and and it is it is funny how there are just expectations, yeah. you know, and, and that, that mom's going to do it, the woman's going to do it. I thought it was great to see so many women supported by their men and the men who were that out there. That was really too. cool. I loved that. that and I'm really sure cool. that, that Keely, that's a lot of what you wanted to see, too, and that you wanted mm -hmm. to see your, your kids see. Uh, well, yes, I would like for... Um, my daughters be proud of me when they get older. They're very young right now. They're five and 21 months. So mm -hmm. the five-year-old really wanted to go to the march, but that's just because she thought it was a party. So, you know. <laughs> Um, she she although, said she was going actually. Yeah. She, yeah. She's pretty indignant about it. <laughs> she was like, I'm coming. She's, she will be her own fierce little mm -hmm. person, and so will my youngest. But um, one of the things I also addressed in talking with people, uh, there's you know there's been this thing uh, going around, copied saying you know the the women's march didn't speak for me and um, it, it didn't speak for all women and and. They felt that it wasn't actually inclusive, and one of the things I explained to them is that you know there were pro-lifers there who there felt are. that they were not included. Right. There are, and I actually had a woman uh, contact me prior to the march about that, and I told her this is not about questioning your opinion on things. And there's women who are pro-life who marched with us. There were a lot right. because this was not a singular issue; it was yep. about multiple issues. Yep. And honestly, that's why I believe it had to fall under the context of a women's march because while no one thing is all women, all women are many different things combined. We so, are. you know, you can be a woman, you can be a woman of color, you can be a single mother, you can be a businesswoman, mm -hmm. you can be an entrepreneur, you can be a CEO, you can be a cook, maybe you're a terrible cook, you know, <laughs> you can be an immigrant, you can be of many different faiths. Right. So. I feel like that was actually the best way to encompass everything was to have women who across their diversity actually represent all of those things. I, and I think that that was done really well, that part of it. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think really what this was about was finding our common ground, finding the things that we, that we can link arms together and say right. we're going to fight yeah. this together. Uh, and, and I think that's what we need going forward. Mm -hmm. um, we probably needed to for a long time. We have the impetus now, but it, you know, we, we need to be able to say, you know, this is what we have in common and this is what's going to help all of our lives. You know, it's not just this one specific issue for this one specific population. Right, right. I hate it, but we are being wrapped uh, we are out of time. <laughs> so I think what that means is that Augusta Solidarity has to come back. You yes. have to be frequent guests here on the show. We'd love to. And, and um, keep us aware and, and let other women out there know how they can One be a plug. part of this. One we more also plug. have a website for people who aren't on Facebook, and you can get in touch with us there and get on our mailing list. It's AugustaSolidarity.org. And, and that's wonderful. We'll make sure that we get that word out, too. Great. Lisa and Keely and Jennifer, thank you for being here. Yeah. And I wish we had more time, <laughs> but we're going to see you again, I'm sure. Great. All right. Thank, thank you. Again. We'll be right back. She's going to love this. What are you doing?